So let's talk about Docker. All right. So spinning up containers, deploying apps is one thing. Yeah. Uh, but what are the steps an organization needs to take if they're going to start adopting a Dockerized workflow? Right. So the first question I would ask myself is, am I actually ready? Can I actually benefit from you know, the things that Docker brings to the table? Um, simple things like, uh, do I have a you know, distributed version control system like Git in place? Do I have a CACD pipeline? Because if I can't produce Docker images, ain't no good. Um, then there are a lot of you know, things around that, like basic hygiene around which kind of Docker images to allow, what can people actually use to build their applications. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is really like, am I actually ready in terms of what I have in place? The second thing then is, does it make sense for a particular application to go all in regarding containers? For some of them, there might be legacy things around where you're like, nah, this doesn't really make sense. Let's, let's keep that. And for new things, let's slowly start rolling it out, getting some experience with that, and then you know, going broader. Uh, in the, in uh, what are some common pitfalls or mistakes that people take when they, when they switch over to a containerized architecture? One thing that I've seen in practice out there is uh, people rushing into that. Like, oh, that's the hive. Everyone needs to do it. Let's do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not paying attention enough on, on, on the other non-tooling aspects like, you know, are people in the organization ready to actually, you know, do 10 or 15 deploys per day? Um, is, is the new, like, divide between whoever runs that, that application, that containerized application in production and whoever provides the base infrastructure does a, you know, provisions a Kubernetes cluster or whatever, yeah. is that there? Is the organization there as yeah. such? Um, other things, uh, you know, because it is, you know, comes with certain promises or there are certain expectations around that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't see them, if you don't, if they don't realize in a, in a certain amount of time, then you probably go like, oh, why did we invest in that? Why did we actually go there? So you need to see these, you know, things actually turning to like lower TCO or higher agility or something, whatever your like most important metrics are. And and if you do that. Up front, you say like, this is what like I want to be able to from three months down to one I don't know hour uh, deployment. Time. Then you see that you measure that after three months, you're you're there or not. Yeah. And then you need to decide is that still the right way or maybe something new. I see. So it needs to be part of a, a comprehensive plan. Yeah. To plan and then review it. Really adapt easy. your workflow and exactly. uh, properly incentivize exactly. people. And yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That exactly. makes a lot of sense. Right. So. Uh, here at Velocity, you just gave a two-day training right. on building containerized applications at scale. That's right. I'm yeah. curious, what are some main takeaways from the course? Yeah, so it, it was an awesome class with two days, really, you know, cool people there, really being totally um, into that, uh, having great questions. I think the, the things we saw there was also that you have infrastructure, whatever, be it monitoring or whatever, something that still needs to work together nicely with whatever new stuff you're rolling out. So um, you have certain you know, constraints or restrictions or requirements. Some people want to go into the cloud but are not allowed to or cannot go because of various regulations and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around, they, they go like, no, we, we actually we want to be on premises because of whatever other reasons. Um, and making that fit, uh, yeah, containers are like cloud native and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, you need to you know, be aware of where you want to go and what can you actually do in your environment. I see. Uh, similarly, you, you wrote a, a book with us recently yeah. uh, by the title of Docker Networking and Service Discovery. That's right. So. And so what were some of your goals for that piece? Essentially, I looked at that and, and had a lot of you know, bookmarks and notes and, and whatnot. It's like, there's no really one place that for this topic, which is kind of central to you know, a distributed system, which is a network of you know, components mm -hmm. working together. Yep. And the price we're paying for this you know, automatic scheduling is actually service discovery. So networking and service discovery being two topics very close to each other, where there was not one single go-to place that I uh, was aware mm -hmm. of. I thought like, all right, someone has to write it and that someone turned out to be me. Yeah. Well, very fast moving space. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so to finish up, what are some projects that you're particularly interested in following lately or right. people doing interesting things? Right. So two things, the one thing it's probably obvious and I guess you guys have a, a conference coming up on that is machine learning, everything around that, machine mm -hmm. learning, AI and so on. 
Um, the other thing I'm really interested in is uh, serverless architecture, so any kind of service offers unit ex of execution being a function, being even more agile and, mm -hmm. and being able to get features out there to the, to the customer faster. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me.